drop, drop it on the random. What up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of my top five heavy rotation, no particular order. Jim Jones L. Capo. I gotta say, man, I've never been a huge fan of Jim Jones as a soloist. Um, liked a couple of songs here and there. Heard the last album was dope. Still didn't really tune in. Decided this time, okay. Now, if he done released two dope albums in a row, I need to at least check out the new one before I go back and check the old one. And I'm here to say El Capo is just dope. I think Jim Jones has found his niche as far as his flow. I think he's gotten better as an MC, um, being descriptive and the things he talks about in such a way that's cool and compelling and feels true to him and his feelings and his journey. And I think that's what attracts most hip hop fans to his music to this day. And to me, that's what makes this El Capo joint so dope. So definitely, if you haven't, check it out. The new Flying Lotus album, I'm listening to this every day. Why it is a perfect palate cleanser for me, a music fan, but also a hip hop fan. When I'm tired of listening to hip hop and R&B and stuff like that, this music on Flying Lotus album and his other albums uh, are, are nice, diversion from what is the norm in music. Sonically, he plays around with different genres of music to create his own sounds. And there's something about that that any music fan can uh, enjoy, especially if you're a fan of funk, electronic music, hip hop music, soul, R&B, whatever, whatever, whatever you want. It's all mixed up into a nice gumbo and uh, I really enjoy it. Nice difference from everything else I'm listening to. Next up, an album that didn't review very well, but I like it. Uh, it's called Father of Assad. It's DJ Khaled. Uh, now, I ain't no big Khaled fan, but I was a fan of the whole Major Key album. And I just like it because it's, it's like summertime music. You know, like when that weather breaks and it gets warm and it's nice out and you want to drop the top or open the sunroof or what, maybe you ain't got a car, you just got sun hitting you in the top of the dome, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I, I like a couple of the records on here. Now, don't get me wrong, there are things I skip on here, uh, but not enough to make me feel like I don't need to listen to this album. I just like having variety and not for variety's sake, but for the simple fact that I like a lot of these records and I like the uh, feeling it gives me when I listen to them. This always feels like Miami time, summertime, tank tops, shorts, fresh kicks, good stuff like that. So I like it, it's in my rotation. Pete Rock, Return of the SP-1200. Now I'm not big on instrumental albums because sometimes I feel like I can only listen to the loop of a beat but for so long without wanting to hear a rapper rap over it. And you've had other instrumental albums in the past, like some from Jay Dilla and some from Alchemist, where there are other elements added into it as far as sound effects and things like that, that uh, kind of add and, and, and give you variety throughout the beat that you're hearing. Um, but I feel like this return of the SP-1200 is something about it. I don't know if it's a nostalgia feel for me, given the fact that it's Pete Rock and it's like older beats, um, but I like the sound of it and it feels new in some ways, you know what I'm saying? And it's not really much like that out here. Like, you know, you listen to, uh, typically listen to an instrumental album, you're hearing more newer techniques and styles of beats. This feels like, you know, vintage. Um, instrumental album. So I like it, man. It's, it's kind of cool and you can play it around kids or your parents or whatever because there's no cussing in it. It's just boom back beats. And this is probably the album I listen to the most. It is the album I listen to the most. And that's Anderson Pox Ventura. I've said it before on my podcast. When you look at the first album that came out, Oxnard, right? And that sound on that album was disappointing to a lot of people who were expecting a follow-up to Malibu, right? But instead, Oxnar was more of the Anderson Pac that appeared on Dre's Compton, which wasn't bad, but that's not what we wanted. We wanted Malibu Anderson Pac. 
and we got that in Ventura. Ventura is such a dope album, man. Features on there, like Three Stacks is on there, Andre 3000 of Outkast, uh, Brandy, Jasmine Sullivan, and even Nate Dogg appears on there. It is the perfect, it is the album that should have came out first when he had all the momentum, when he was doing all the interviews, instead of Oxnard. Oxnard is cool, It's but it's not what we wanted. And now it seems worse because this album was clearly way better. So, it's in my happy rotation. What's in your top five rotation? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Maybe you can put me on to something I'm not listening to. Leave that in the comment section below. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you love this video, hit that subscribe button so you can stay locked in for more content. Because we got more coming. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Vegas World INC and check out my podcast, Hip Hop Now Podcast, available wherever you listen to podcasts. Peace. Dropping on the random.